My has this pandemic been a crazy one? And I'm not just talking about COVID, but what it's done to the entertainment industry as a whole. We've seen major studio films begin to receive simultaneous theatrical and streaming releases, while others have the availability for their digital releases shortened. However, one studio is not doing any of these for their theatrical releases, and it's Pixar. I remember being shocked when Soul was announced for streaming on Disney+. Plus. Before then, Disney had never announced a film release on Disney+, Plus without premiere access that wasn't an original film like Noel or the new Phineas and Ferb movie. So I wondered if this strategy would work. Then, when Luca was released the same way, I was like, why are they doing this again? Then, Turning Red was moved to Disney+, Plus, which I predicted because Sony's film Mobius was delayed to April, and I thought some films would follow suit, so it wasn't a huge shock to me. Now, this is entirely Pixar's own doing. It's Disney's. This is because every time a Pixar movie has been moved to streaming after the release of Soul, it shocks the employees, and makes them be seen as worthless compared to Disney's other entities. Due to this, I was wondering, does Disney even think Pixar is worthy for them anymore? I also asked myself, why are they doing this? And luckily, I think I know why they're doing this besides COVID. Now, before we get to the reasons, let's get into a little history regarding these new kinds of movie releases. It all started with Trolls World Tour. DreamWorks Animation and Universal, as soon as the pandemic hit, announced that they would release the movie on video on demand on the date it would originally hit theaters. Many people thought the release strategy was smart, but after the release of Trolls World Tour and Universal announcing they would do day and date releases, theater owners got angry over it. It got to the point where AMC refused to show Universal films in theaters. Universal would eventually change their plans later on to releasing movies on digital platforms weeks after the theatrical release. Following the success of Trolls World Tour, Disney themselves would release the live-action version of Mulan using a new system known as Premiere Access, in which one would have to pay a fee to watch the movie as many times as they want until a certain date. However, this did not happen with Soul, and it was put on Disney Plus with no fee. Why was this the case? My theory as to why this happened is because of Disney Plus wanting to attract new subscribers. You see, not a lot of families would be willing to pay the fee Disney Plus put out for Mulan for something like Soul. Plus, the Mulan remake was seen by the public as inferior to something like Soul, which was a promising original film by a well-known entity of the Walt Disney Company compared to Mulan, which most saw as an obvious cash grab begging it on Disney's live-action remake. So far, there was one Pixar film that proved with a story that appeals to all ages and marketable characters, you can move lots of merchandise. And that film was Luca. Take a look at this tweet showing where the Luca merchandise was at a shop at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom. You can see that Soul merchandise is still on the shelves, while except for two Machiavelli plushies, all the Luca merchandise is sold out. Now, because there's a cute and marketable Big Red Panda in Turning Red, I assume that the merchandise for the movie will be a big hit if it's popular on Disney+. Plus. Why do I think this? Recently, Encanto, a Walt Disney Animation Studios movie that was a modest success in theaters, boomed in popularity when it was put on Disney Plus on Christmas Eve. Now, this problem isn't exclusive to just Pixar. There is one other entity of a major entertainment corporation that is suffering the same problem as Pixar, and it is Paramount Animation, but they have a different reason for their actions. Due to the failure of some of their films like Wonder Park, Monster Trucks, and Sherlock Gnomes, Paramount Animation released their two most recent films, Sponge on the Run and Rumble, onto Paramount+. Plus. Now, while I think Disney has good reasons for why they put Pixar's new films onto Disney+, Plus, Paramount was actually making a wise decision with Rumble. Much like Paramount Animation's other films, I believe this would have tanked at the box office. For some strange reason, despite being based on a cultural phenomenon, Paramount took their precious time to release Sponge on the Run in the United States, just to get people to buy Paramount Plus, which, come to think of it, is similar to what Disney's doing to Pixar movies nowadays. Similarly, the fourth Hotel Transylvania movie, which would serve as the finale of the franchise, was dumped onto Amazon Prime Video in January of 2022. Sure, Sony's other free animated movies from that year were put onto Netflix, but this made the least sense out of all of them. The Hotel Transylvania movies were popular, so why would you go ahead and put your big finale to such a popular series onto a streaming service instead of the big screen, where it was meant to be seen? These two examples prove that not all companies are immune to the stupidity Disney had when putting Pixar films onto Disney+. 
Even if from a corporate perspective, these stupid moves made sense for these streaming services, these choices have angered a lot of fans of these movies. Lastly, I would like to say that Disney can fix their mistakes with distributing Pixar films. Last year, Disney and AMC theaters held a Disney Plus movie festival for Disney Plus Day and showed surprise movies. Wouldn't it be amazing if one of the surprise films for this year's Disney Plus Day turned out to be Soul, Luca, or Turning Red? Or what if Disney and AMC theaters decided to do a film festival of Pixar films, which included the three films that skipped theaters? From 2017 to 2019, Disney and AMC partnered up to do a Disney Princess Film Festival, so a Pixar Film Festival wouldn't be out of the question. Now, where does this leave Lightyear? I'm highly sure that this film will hit theaters because it is a spin-off of Toy Story, one of Pixar's biggest franchises. But if it does hit Disney+, Plus, I bet there will be some trouble behind the scenes at Pixar. Until then, we'll just have to wait and see what the future holds.